All right, hello, hello, hello. Today is Tuesday, October 2nd, 2007. This is the Catholic Christians Podcast. I'm Scott. And I'm Doug. And I'm Lindsay. And I'm Kathy. And today's a really, really special um, version of the podcast. We are doing um, special gift boxes. Kathy, do you want to kind of take a shot at, at giving people a, an overview of what we're doing? Sure. Um, what we're doing is um, we're working with Bright Hope International is doing med packs for Africa. And so we have our list of items we need to go to the store and buy and put in our package. So what's on that list? What kind of things are on that list? Um, the things on the list are bar soap, body lotion, toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, talcum powder, antibiotic ointment, petroleum jelly, band-aids, a washcloth, and facial tissues. These are things that we have every day available available to us, and it's just little things that they don't they they aren't able to get, or it's not like they can run out to Walmart and go get all these things for themselves. They don't have as much uh, availability of these items in Africa. Right. So. Cool. So we'll be working on these tonight, and uh, we're gonna go do some stuff, and I'll splice this all together into a cool video. By the way, the video downloads have been very cool. Yeah. We are downloading. With the, what, like, with, with the episode I just did by myself because I was stranded in Pennsylvania, four to one. Four video downloads for every one audio download. So people are loving That's actually it. actually Yeah, That's people, cool. people awesome. like the video. So If they want to find out more information, they can go to brighthope.org, which was on the website from the previous podcast. Because these hot babes are That's right. right. Brighthope.org, <laughs> and we'll have that information as well. Um, but w while we're doing this, we're also going to continue on with the podcast as usual. So how was everybody's week? Every week, one to five stars? Uh, Lindsay, how was your week? Do you hear that light? It was good. Um, I got a kitty. She's this big. I'm in a head. What color is kitty? Black. All black. With green eyes. Yeah, nice. Yeah, she's really pretty. And her name is Betty. It's in the season of Betty. Halloween. <laughs> like nice. Betty. Classic Betty. American name. Yeah, kind of. More like Betty Jo. Betty Jo? Is that okay? No, no. Betty Jo is. I just named yeah, her. Yeah, but Betty, she's rocking. She's um, she's very talkative, so she's she's a crybaby. She's baby. spoiled. She's yeah. So far, but we love her. She tried to lock her up in the bedroom so I wouldn't have to play with her, and she cried and cried and cried. She <laughs> makes our eyes itch. Oh really? So yes. somebody's allergic? We're we both allergic. Ah, uh, okay. I'm not. <laughs> uh, well, we are. <laughs> well, my week was. I'll give my week. Uh, it's it's. Uh, let's go with like. A solid three. Three out of five stars. Um, in the last week, I've been um, traveling a whole bunch. Um, I just came back from Michigan um, yesterday, and the week before, I was, um, where was I? New York. New York. Buffalo. Buffalo, New York. Uh, we had a couple breakdowns and some automotive issues, um, but overall, things went as planned, so you can't complain about that. Um, got some cool stuff done today, and um, so yeah, three stars for me, definitely. Kathy, how's your week? Um, I'm going to go with three stars. Yeah. Which I kind of messed up my drawing. Um, it was a pretty good week, but I just uh, feel a little dragging over the weekend. We did a lot of stuff, so it just got me kind of dragging, feeling like today's Monday instead of Tuesday. So. Right. Doug? I'd, I'd say, uh, yeah, it was kind of... Kind of a three and a half ride, say for myself. Uh, you know, I had a lot of fun and and got to hang out with some cool people and friends of ours and this and that. And uh, Lindsay and I got to hang out and stuff, and we got the cat. But it's just been kind of one of those, you know, a little bit, a little bit of a bummer here and there type week. So, right. Uh, but yeah, overall, you know, can't complain, right? Good deal. Great weather, all that. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's kind of it's finally cool enough now that you want to be outside. Yeah, I went biking today. Yeah, so that was cool. How far did you go? Uh, not that far. I no. I actually took the bike downtown, and uh, you know rode all around like downtown, and hit up the canal, and then around you know museums, and like went back. And, you know, just kind of hit up all the time. Right. So it was cool. Okay. Good deal. All right, check it out. Does anybody have to check it out this week? Uh, every week we, we talk about cool things that we found in life or on the web and we try to share it with you guys and hopefully you guys will get something cool out of that. Starbucks is giving away a free iTunes song every day this week. Every day this month. Oh, so this week Starbucks. is Bob Dylan. Yeah, this, today is Bob Dylan. And, and, the, is Bob Dylan. and this is part of that iPhone deal? 
or like or the iTunes Music Store available yeah. on Starbucks. And it's yeah, free, yeah. so they give you free. Nice. They give you like a little promo card, and you just get to redeem it. It's pretty cool. Very nice. You like that, man? Those those new i i pod touches, they're very cool. Even without the phone, it's oh, still pretty. Right. It's, it's still a pretty cool piece of electronics. I tell you though, I just like the fact that you finally have something the size of an iPod that has a functional web browser on it. I think that the web browser is to me the part that that makes it very cool, not the phone or the iPod. Yeah, you I know, agree. It's that portable web browser that's totally cool. I'm very sold on it. Okay. Anybody else have anything cool this week? Uh, I've been kind of slacking as far as awesome stuff. But yeah. I don't know. No, nothing. Nothing too great. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to investigate. So maybe this is a. Maybe this is like a challenge that. Hey, check check this out, Doug. You know, and uh, give me a book to read. Somebody email me. Yeah. Um, I got a couple new books from my dad, so I'm hitting those up. And but they're both kind of short, so that that'll be done soon. And um, yeah, hit me up and uh, give me what you like to read. Kathy, anything cool this um, week? I can't remember. I just went like on the tip of my tongue, and I can't remember what it was. Tip of your tongue. I wonder where that phrase comes from. I wonder like how that phrase got started. Tip of your tongue. I think maybe the cool, coolest thing I found this week was when I did my Facebook account, I was able to add a comic strip, strip to it. So I added, of course, the Peanuts gang. Right, and I think all four of us are on Facebook. So if you're pretty clever with uh, your searching, you can probably find us and and like add us and say that you slept with us or something like that. Something scandalous. Yeah, something hey. scandalous for sure. Totally. I'll say yeah. yeah or if you, if, you, if you request to be my friend through Facebook, I will certainly put down that you and I hooked up and that it was wonderful. Because yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to smear the experience at all. <laughs> I thought it was something special until I found out he did that on everybody. Yeah, I do that for everybody. Uh, my check out for the week is a website called uversion.com, Y-O-U-V-E-R-S-I-O-N.com. And it is a rethinking of the way online Bibles work. Instead of just being a search for, um, for uh, keywords or text or anything like that among several versions of the Bible, it also allows you to, to take the verse you're reading and tag it and, and, and make it searchable. And you know, if you're looking at a certain piece of text and you say, hey, that reminds me of a YouTube video I saw, you can kind of connect it all together. Oh, that's kind of weird. And then it's social media. It's like YouTube or, or like MySpace, so you can share it with all your friends. So it adds that, that social networking aspect to, to it as well. Now, do you think that's going to work out well, or do you think people are going to ruin that? Well, I, th I think in general, the Christian community is kind of slow to pick up on cool technology. So I'm my worry is that it's going to die before people really catch the vision. And then by the time they catch the vision, some other company will co come along, even though uversion.com is a company that really... Pioneer yeah, started it. So definitely go check out U version and um, and throw them a little bit of love and support so that they keep on doing what they're doing. Um, they're in beta right now, so you know it's not really ready for prime time. But what they have shown looks very encouraging. So uversion.com. All right, one of our new segments since Doug and Lindsay have recently gotten married. We call it the ball and chain. Anything new to report this week, guys? Oh, uh, we do have. Uh, we are officially. Locked in for looking at houses. Yeah, so we made the uh, the jump there and uh, taking, the plunge. taking the plunge looking at houses. So I'm just on the last stages of getting officially pre-approved, um, like you know, with bank statements and things like that. Right. But everything's good with that and um, looking kind of around this area, south side of Indy um, range, you know, and uh, hopefully get something else. Nice. nice. All right. Do, do, the, do the people out in Podland know about the newest addition to the Pierce household? Yes. Do, they, did we mention it while we were taping or before we were taping? We mentioned the kitty. It was, yeah. Yeah. We had a cat, yes. if not. It's yeah. Oh, that's right. It's a black cat. has a very short I have a very short memory. Memory. I just want to make sure that we get everything in the right category. Maybe we'll post the picture up later. That would be nice. Seeing that She's it's, rad. It's the digital age and all that stuff. Yeah, you know. She's very cute. That would be good stuff. All right, I need to take my mind off the box to do the next segment. Crazy Christians, those crazy, crazy, crazy Christians. You know, uh, every week we say the same thing. We love Christians, we love Christ, we love the church, but we certainly understand that if people judge the church by what they read in the media, we understand why some people choose to stay away. And so um, this week I found an article in my favorite scandalous Christian website, onenewsnow.com. 
Uh, I, I basically think that they are the uh, Christian journalism version of a gossip rag, essentially. But they're great for this kind of material. So the title is called, Southern Baptist Leader Warns Against Feminization of Church. And this is actually um, an ongoing debate going on in the church right now. And the, the concept in general is that modern church today is very structured um, towards women. Uh, worship songs are very lovey-dovey, all these kind of uh, you know, ballads, you know, Lord, okay. I love you, you set me free. And, um, and it's a place where, you know, where the type A male, the hunter-gatherer male, doesn't really feel he has a place anymore. You know, seeing that you know most guys aren't singers and don't want, don't necessarily want to express themselves that way. Um, to have a church service that is 45 minutes of music and then 15 minutes of of scripture doesn't necessarily appeal to guys anymore. And so this article takes it one step further and says, um, and this is um, Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary (SWBTS) for short has begun offering a Bachelor of Arts in Humanities with a concentration in homemaking. And this yeah. is to encourage female Christians to kind of get back to their traditional... Their roots. Yeah, right. The traditional um, roles in the family and in culture and in Christian culture. Um, many people in and outside of the church have blasted um, this, uh, this program saying that it's... Uh, backwards thinking and uh, uh, and that it's just uh, kind of it's stupid to think that the only place for a woman is barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen kind of thing um, citing that 60% of all college and university students are now female and so it's kind of silly to think that if women are the majority of people going for higher education that they would be the minority in the roles of leadership and you're saying was a like a Southern Baptists. Is that what okay. Yeah, that's what I was about. Right? Um, well, do you feel that sometimes men don't step up to fill the roles that they need to and that women step in to, to fill in the gaps? Yeah, sometimes is the main word. Yeah, definitely. I, sure, I, I certainly think that's a part so of it. So maybe if people object to this, namely men, they need to step up and be more involved in their churches. Yeah, I think, more, like, in my opinion, my opinion is that here in the year 2007, most people who call them Christians, call themselves Christians, are fairly biblically illiterate. And so they don't even know what the biblical role of a man in the family is, and the biblical role of a woman in the family, and the biblical role of men and women in church and in leadership. You know, everybody just kind of goes with the new American attitude of, of if you're qualified, then you should be able to do it. Yeah. You know? And why that makes a lot of sense philosophically and, um, and from a common sense point of view, it's not necessarily always the biblical way to do things. Um, but I also at the same time think it's extremely silly to think that the church is anything other than what we make it, you know? So I, I think it's kind of silly to call the church a feminized church or an anglicized church or or, or whatever, you know? If every church at a local level is whatever the congregation makes it, yeah. you know? So I think it's kind of silly. But it's interesting, and I'll post a link up on chaoticchristians.com and uh, give us some comments, give us some feedback. Let me know uh, what you think. You think I'm all wrong, and you think that only men should be leaders, and only women should uh, be barefoot and pregnant and raising raising kids in the home. Well, let me know. We or, yeah, I think I think another thing that even just locally here, I'm I'm not going to throw out like a church name or anything for this, but I know there's been issues with women in leadership is fine, but when it comes down to like like say like being like the leader of whatever group, you know. But when it comes down to actually, like, like teaching the word, uh -huh. I know some churches that have had some major issues with that. Yeah. And uh, and and personally, I think that is kind of silly. That's like on the standpoint of, you know, that definitely is backwards. Um, but you know, like you can do the one, but not the other. Right. So I don't know. Very interesting. Yeah. But I think definitely a person in leadership should be teaching anyway, you know, the same concepts, really. Totally. So, uh, and So yeah, let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what your opinions are about this, about women in leadership and what the traditional roles of men and women are. And just shoot us an email, uh, scott at chaoticchristians.com or doug at chaoticchristians.com, and we make sure to share the love and make sure everybody knows what's going on.
So yeah, we did that way. All right, moving right along. Um, every week, um, as well as pointing out what's kind of crazy about Christianity and the church in a comedic, fun-loving sort of way, we also like to be encouraging and, and talk about things that are edifying to the church as well. And since we're doing these boxes, I thought tonight we should definitely talk about um, the heart of charity and what that means, especially for us in America today. Um, we, we live in a country and in a time where it is not only acceptable, but it is encouraged that, that you should care about numero uno and get yours and make sure that you are taken care of and that you excel in life. And um, it, it's kind of an offshoot of, of the American dream, right? The American dream being that if you work really, really hard, um, that, that you deserve all the rewards of yeah. that hard work. And not to feel bad for it. And not to feel bad that other people you know, may not um, get the same kind of uh, riches and blessings that you get. And, and I understand that, and I agree with that. I'll just, I wonder if somewhere in, in time that we've forgotten how to care for one another. You know, um, as I look through um, other cultures and other periods of time, it seemed like there, there's always been this sense of, um, at a family level, the family kind of protects itself. And then at a community level, the community protects its own. And yeah. then at a state level, you know, and at every level, everybody takes care of each other. And that way you don't have a national crisis of poverty or a national crisis of whatever, because at the family and community level, everything's taken care of. So the first question I wanted to ask is, is where did we lose that? I think, I don't even think it's gone. I think it's just gone with us right here because I, I think that, like you said, like in other countries, and uh, here I, I still see it in a lot of the more like ethnic communities. Uh huh. You know, um, you go to a place that's very Hispanic heavy or, or something like that. Um, and I see a lot more community. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, definitely. Like, you know, helping each other out, doing whatever, this like that or that. that restaurant, even. That restaurant? Yeah, like, you have, a, you see a lot more family businesses, you know. Um, but also, yeah, just like their neighbors and stuff like that. And yeah. I think that the smaller, like, or even in, like, you know, you go to, like, um, some Asian, have, like, some very densely populated Asian areas, you know. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, you, you have different concepts, and you're brought up differently, you know? Yeah. But I think for the average, like, you know, American person, you know, half the time you don't even know your neighbor next door. Right. And I think that's a big issue. Yeah. That you lose, because you don't care, and we're not meant to care, you know? Right. Like, that's just not what's, what we're brought up with, no one cares. Right. Like, one of the things that happens in American culture is, is the system, right? Um, if you're born, and very early on in life, if you have, if you're blessed with um, with parents that care, um, you know they start exercising you and working out the limbs and making sure that that you're moving. And you're, you know they do little games and they do toys that are specifically educationally involved, and you know they try to get you into a good school for preschool and kindergarten, um, so that you can socialize with kids and get ready for grade school and move on to high school and college and get into a good college and a big career. And, and from a very early age, you're put on, put on the track. Um, and everybody here has been on that track, mm -hmm. except that you and I have kind of wandered off the track a little bit. And so I wanted to ask you in particular. What do you mean, wandered off? Yeah, like, it, like, instead of like just a traditional, I'm going to get through college in four years and head off to a career. I'm a college dropout. Right. And, and I was too, right? <laughs> I was too. So what I wanted to ask you, I'm sorry. You're okay. Um, what I wanted to ask you is what, what was the light bulb moment for you that said something needs to change in my life? I think as far as, especially the education uh, part of it, at least for me at this point, it's more so that I wasn't ready, I think. Um, and there's this big common misconception that if you don't go right after high school, you're screwed. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people look down on you for that. Um, but so I went right after high school, and you know I've been out for a couple of years now. Um, and I think the biggest thing that I'm still struggling with as far as work goes, and also 
like just higher education is finding something that's not going to just pass time and make me more money necessarily. It's something that's going to pass my time that I'm passionate about. Uh huh. Like honestly, um, and I think that's where my biggest struggle is 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 realizing that you know in the search of this I, I am passing all this time something that I'm not really passionate about, you know? Yeah. And uh, I think that it would take me forever if I was still at college, you know, just kind of doing my thing. Uh -huh. end up out and kind of set my path for like a, you know, whatever existence, you know? Right. So at least for now, I mean, I know that I definitely would like to go back to school at yeah. some point. Maybe not pay the, the big bucks at some university for a title, but definitely, you know, I think it's all about finding something that's worthwhile to you and that makes sense, not just for you. Right. And so, and so, uh, um, I don't know if that answers your question. Right. Or not. Well, I just, I was trying, just, just to kind of make it more succinct. Um, so you're in college, and 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 you're, and you're you're going through the you know doing the college stuff, classes, socializations, uh, making new friends, new experiences. And it was just kind of that lack of... It all just seems very, like, unnecessary. Yeah. So, okay. Like, I know when I went to college the first time around, um, right after high school, um, I felt the same way um, in the sense that I felt very much like, am I doing anything worthwhile that leads to anything, anything that makes me happy or gives me a sense of worth? Yeah, not and, really. Yeah, and the answer to all that was no. But worse than that... Um, like, I, I'm going to college, and that's not even, like, sometimes you do things and you feel like, you know, even though I don't like it, I know it's going to benefit me. I was in college feeling like, this is just so, I'm spinning my wheels going backwards. You know, I'm not even making forward progress, I'm, 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 I'm hurting myself, you know. So that's when I decided to, uh, to jump out of it and, and, and do something different. Um, but the two ladies here have actually stayed on a more traditional uh, track in regards to college and education. And so what I wanted to ask you, the two of you, was, um, so, you're, so you're doing the thing, right? You're doing the program in high school and college and, and life. Um, so, Kathy, for you, did you, did you kind of, like, from high school to college, did you just think about, okay, for after college I just want to get a job and, and be, you know, be stable and this and that? And at what point did it kind of did that kind of change to like the more um, abstract things like you know I want to be a servant of God I want to be you know like I, you know I want to be somebody who makes a difference in the world those kind of things you know when when did those thoughts start to play an important role in in who you are? Well, I actually didn't want to go to college. Really? <laughs> I wanted to stay home forever. <laughs> My mom kicked me out. Nice. Not, not in the traditional sense of kicking you out. It's, it was more like, you need to think about college. You need to think about where you want to go. So I picked going to a Christian liberal arts college, and I picked going into teaching. So I went to college thinking that I wanted to go into teaching, and I wanted to make a difference in students' lives. And then I got into teaching, and after about seven years of bouncing around the Chicago suburbs and different school systems, I decided there were better ways to make a difference in kids' lives than being in the school system. Yeah. So, I mean, and but... that's sad, actually, in a lot of ways. Yeah. But. I think it was really neat, though. I think every step of the way, I think God has been with me. Or, and I know God has been with me every step of the way, because the one year I picked substitute teaching and I, I was a substitute teacher in the schools that our youth group was in and out of those kids that I was a substitute teacher for I, I built special relationships with those kids and then when I did land a teaching special job special appropriate relationships with those kids special friendships with those kids <laughs> you are so you always bring us back down to the gutter Sorry. why can't you be above all that because in this day and age okay. you've got to put the disclaimer so I think, you know, it made, as a youth leader, it made it easier for me to relate to them because I could talk to them about school events and things like that. And then when I became a teacher, I actually ended up at a school where one of our youth group kids was. And I think that that built another good friendship with, with that person, and we're still in touch with them today. So, you know, um, it's hard to answer your question because I went to college wanting to make a difference and get into a field that 
where God wanted me to be. Right. So. Um, but your direction changed. But my direction changed after being in the workforce and decided that I didn't need to be in the school system to do that. And I decided I needed to make money <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> to pay my bills and to be a good steward of my finances. Well, so, you got to pay those debts at some point. Yeah. So, and, and Christian colleges are not cheap, so, um, which they're more expensive when, than when I went now, but, uh, um, just going to keep going up anyway. Yeah, yeah it's just going to keep going up and up. I don't know how kids afford college these days. And I think if you're going to go to college, you should seriously do the junior college for a couple years, get your credits in, and then transfer into a major university. So, Lindsay, so, you, you are currently in the process, right? Um, you are currently doing the, the, the college thing. So, so in real time then, how do you, um, how do you um, prioritize between... Um, the demands of work, the demands of school, and then the demands of the cross. And Doug. And what? the demands of Doug. And the demands of Doug. Me, I should be up there somewhere. <laughs> Jeez. Um, it's not easy, and especially that Doug part. Yeah, right? <laughs> God bless you for that. And it's a hard struggle every day, but I think that um, the path that I'm taking, which is nursing for all of you who don't know that, um, I think that God is setting me up by going to school right now to serve Him and be able to be a witness and care for other people when I'm out of school. Right. And I feel like that you have options to like go cool places and see new things and get new perspectives on about a zillion different things. Yeah, and I could do mission work in my field and be doing my job and getting paid or not right and be doing mission work so you're you're really what you're in a mode of of being obedient to god means going to school being obedient to god means being at starbucks and all those other things that's really cool yeah. i always appreciate it when people think that way because my brain doesn't it's, my brain just doesn't work that way right i'm very much kind of like this kind of like okay being obedient to god means doing the things of the bible you mm -hmm. know and so it's always a good reminder when, when people kind of snap me out of my little box of, of how I view the world and how things are in the Scott Wilder universe. So I appreciate it very much. Appreciate it. And just a reminder to all of you who are out there kind of struggling with that question of am, am I stewarding my time well and, and, uh, and those kind of things. Um, that's not for anybody else to answer but you and God, and uh, you know, you don't need to look to the parents or to the teachers or to the guidance counselors or whatever to affirm that you're doing what you should be doing. You know, um, trust in your own, um, you trust in your own ideas and, and who you are, and know that God is is in there and all that. You know, for me, I switched careers totally and went to become an administrative assistant. And you kind of think, well, what does having to be a secretary have to do with serving God? And right now. We, um, I worked at a church for two years, and we just started going to a new church, and the pastor found out through some little bird that told him that um, I might be able to help in a certain area, that would be Scott, and then Hello. when I was talking to him about helping him out in that area, he found out that I was the church secretary, and that I have these administrative skills, which are really in need at the church, so, you know, it, it may seem like, you know, I went to become an administrative assistant because... I could get out of teaching, and it, was, it was, had some teaching aspects to it, but now down the road, not knowing that I was helpful at a church for two years being their secretary and helping them with their building project and stuff like that, and now we're going to a new church and I'm able to help out in, in areas that they have a big need and need to know how other people would do them or have a better focus or organize them better. So it's... It seems like such a little thing to me because it's something that I'm good at, but it's such a huge thing to them when they don't have a church secretary. Mm -hmm. So So then, if we get back to our real topic of charity, and I don't know how to use this thing right. You just stamp and then kind of circle. Yeah. Okay. Some of them work better than others. Yeah. Of course, Apparently. I had lots of practice on mine <laughs> while you guys were talking. And so I'm, I'm wondering, when in the process... 
do we kind of lose that that childlike sense of I have a responsibility to make the world a better place? You know, I think when the bills come in. Yeah, is it is it that easy? Just kind of. I think so. I think it's sad, but I think so. It's really practical. It's really just as practical uh, as as somebody needs to uh, somebody needs to fry the bacon and pay pay the man. So, yeah, I mean, right I now. I think it's not only that. Like, I think it's time too. I mean, it's not just money. I mean, there's ways to do charity without money. I mean, we're we're doing this project, which is a very minimal financial impact for us, yes. but for them, it's a huge thing. Right. So I think it's. It's not only that, it's, it's, it's not just the money, but it's the time and it's just the attitude that I'm so busy, I can't think to do anything else. Yeah. So. I think that's actually a really good point, because I mean, you hear the expression in the business world, time is money, you know, exactly. and if money is so important here, like, like, it just shows how important time is, you know, to some, I don't know, it makes sense to me, um, especially for stuff like this, you know, it's really good. So, so Doug, you were just telling a story earlier about about um, meeting a homeless guy. Would you be willing to share that story with uh, the people in Podland? I don't know if it was a beneficial story, but either way, so I'm biking downtown today, and uh, you know, ran into this uh, interesting gentleman, and uh, you know, we were just we were just talking, and he was kind of looking for some money, and. So I just kept talking to him, you know, originally said, hey, you know, I don't know, because I only had a couple bucks on me anyway. Um, but, you know, we started talking, and, he, you know, he knew I didn't have any money at that point. And I was like, oh, man, check this out. You know, I play harmonica, and he played me some tunes and, and you know, sang me his tunes after a little bit. And uh, he was actually pretty darn good at harmonica, not the best singer, but it was cool. Uh, he just, you know, real rough, and... Um, started telling about his kids and he actually moved here from California to see his kids but his kids left and now he's stuck here and um, you know just just today actually went in for a mental exam to try to get disability since I think you know he obviously knows he's not all there and stuff like that and um, right I, I don't know you know and so what I'm wondering is what prompted you to even take the time and listen uh, I don't know, I mean, I, I typically like to, to give people the time of day. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I didn't really have anything going on today. I, uh, I called in and sick to work, and uh, I was out just kind of enjoying the day, and it was kind of like a, hey, let's get my head back on straight kind of day for me, and it's, it's definitely interesting to get a different perspective. And instead, just brush people off, you know. Um, and even afterward, he was like, hey, man, Thanks for talking to me. Yeah, and, and that really was like, man, you know, who who says that when you when you talk to people afterward? Yeah. So obviously people, you know, don't usually sit around and talk to them. Yeah. So that was cool, and I, I don't know, you know, I, I I think it's interesting to see different people's lives and see where they're at, and and uh, you know, I gave him a couple bucks, and like, and that he was psyched, you know. Yeah. And a lot of people. You know, totally, and I, that. That, that's exactly where I was going is in this whole, in this conversation about charity the, the first thing is just being willing to to take some time you know and just when that weird opportunity comes that that seems a little bizarre just to say yeah I don't know you but that doesn't mean that you don't matter mm -hmm. you know even though this may not be like a big conversation about philosophy or the arguments or anything I still have a couple minutes yeah. that I can just invest in a little conversation and I'm sure that it wasn't your goal to affirm this guy. But at the same time, maybe in the back of your mind, you kind of knew that you were... That yeah, this, that it was just, something. Yeah, it was doing something. It matters, it matters to people, I think. To you know? Listen to. You'll get the same... I feel like it's the same kind of thing. Like, um, you know, a lot of times you have older people, like the elderly, that either their family's not around or isn't just... Is, is just not available, you know? Right. And you go to these homeless, uh, not homeless, you go to these elderly folks' homes, you know, and you sit down, and they can tell you everything, and they love to tell you about their lives. Yeah. Because someone takes interest, you know? Right. 
And it makes their whole week. Yeah. Someplace like that, you know? Because right. what else do they have to look forward to except people in action, really? Yeah. It's not so, and that's a different case where it's not so much money in a lot of their, the elderly people. It's like, they don't need money at that age, most of them. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know, they just want a friend. Yeah. And that's, that's really what does it. So. Totally. Like, most, most of you guys know that um, if, it's a, if it's a Saturday and I'm not busy or exhausted from traveling, then you'll probably find me downtown Indianapolis at the UB Cafe. Um, volunteering some time there, and and that's that, that's an organized way of doing charity. You know, giving money to the Red Cross or giving blood; those are all wonderful and organized ways of being charitable. But certainly, that's not the only way. You know, just taking some time to to humor somebody in a conversation on the street is every bit as charitable and every bit as meaningful. And um, and I just wanted to encourage everybody this week uh, to look for those opportunities and don't let them pass you by. With just because you're too busy making your way to work or making your way to classes or, or you know, getting to the store before it closes or anything like that, you know, look for those opportunities to to bless somebody, not with money and not with you know those traditional kind of things, but just with uh, with whatever it is they need. Um, anybody else have any kind of like thoughts about like just sewing into people's lives like that? I went to the circus this week. I'm sorry. I'm dying, to, I'm dying to tell everybody. I'm not, not that I have anything to do, but no. check out the circus. Which circus did you go to? You the were ring. so in your good friends' lives. Yeah, yeah, we hung out with good friends, AJ and Anna of ours, and, and they're awesome. Whom we have yet to meet on the podcast. Yeah, but they're awesome people, and, and they love Jesus and stuff. Uh, no, but it was awesome. I just, I don't know. I, I've, been, I've been trying to wait. Like, until something died down. I thought that was going to be your check it out or something. I, I, it was, was but I, I forgot. You like, ah! <laughs> I don't know. They still come in on trains. Yeah. And that was really cool. And, I saw a train today. Uh, it was just really cool. Uh, tons of stuff going on. And, you know, it makes me think of what would I do if I drove off and joined the circus. You know? Have you thought about growing off and joining the circus? Uh, younger. How does your wife feel about that? I think you would fit. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know, either way. My sister actually has a friend who, uh, who joined the circus. Um, he, he's a very, very talented drummer. And, um, and he actually got a job, I think it was Ringling Brothers and Barnum Bailey Circus. The band there is awesome. Uh, yeah, it's one it's of the band members. super solid. You think it's a recording. But, but him and his friend, like, and, you know, you got you to feel like anytime anybody gets, like, the big gig, you know, the big major gig, that's just, you just coast, you know. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, him and, and one of the other guys he works with is joke. Driving around the country in a little Geo Metro, yeah, you know, right. with, with tons of percussion gear, you know, just struggling to make it from gig to gig. But, you know. So yeah, I don't know. I just forgot to tell you that. That's Otherwise, awesome. I'm pretty happy. With yeah. Thing overall. Nice. All right. So how do we usually close this thing out? Uh, you do your housekeeping. Housekeeping stuff. Uh, emails. We'd love to hear feedback from you. Uh, what you're thinking? What you're thinking about? Things going on in your life? If you have anything to recommend for check it out. Um, if you have anything to talk about marriage and getting to know one another and the life lessons you've learned, we'd love to hear those as well. Um, you can email to email at chaoticchristians.com or podcast at chaoticchristians.com or scott at chaoticchristians.com. And Scott checks his email more than I do. I do. I'm better about that because I'm more of a geek. And my, my, my regular job allows me to check email pretty frequently. So, so probably hit him up first and... That's you right. don't mind waiting to hit me up. I'm the dependable one. Yeah. That's <laughs> Sometimes. right. Sometimes. Um, also, um, show notes are up at chaoticchristians.com. Uh, so you can always check those out. You can leave comments on the website. that We'd love to hear from you. And also on the website are the phone numbers, so you can leave us a voicemail, which we have this week. We have a voicemail this week. Let me find that. And forgot. in the meantime, yeah. uh, obviously download this sweet video and start doing that, which is cool, and I guess, I guess it's pretty good so far. But also keep subscribing. We're still subscribable. Yeah, totally. As far as like iTunes and stuff like that goes. Absolutely. So you don't have to remember to find us. It'll just update. Yeah. And on the, on the end of these videos are little advertisements. And I haven't been watching very closely, so I don't know if they're appropriate or inappropriate or what. But if they are appropriate, go ahead and click on those ads just to give us a little penny every now and then so we can bless some people in Africa. Uh, with those kind of things. Lindsay's doing the, uh, let me turn the boxes. Oh, okay. yeah. Did you, you get a line? Oh, yes, we're getting there. Okay. So, we have a voicemail here, 40 seconds long. And it's funny because uh, 
person who left the voicemail forgot to give their permission for us to use it. So he called back a second time just to give us permission. Good deal. Oh, that's cool. So, so let me go back to the beginning and play this voicemail. Pop the jam. I think Scott's going to need to spend a little more time afterwards. Virginia, thank you very much, and we'll be praying for you guys. What's the name of the book again? The uh, Ragamuffin Gospel? Yeah. So we'll have links for all that. Um, I, I don't remember, in the, did they lead, did he actually say what church? No, I just said youth pastor. Yeah, he should have told us what church so we could have linked to your church. So send me an email, scott at catechristians.com, so we can give your church a little bit of uh, link love. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Link love. Link love. <laughs> what is it? I don't even know what that means. All right, but anyway, we're going to finish these boxes by going out and shopping, and I'm going to videotape all that, and we'll splice this all together. So, once again, I am Scott. And I'm Doug. And I'm Lindsay. And I'm Kathy. Thanks a lot, everybody. God bless. Thank you. Wait, you're the last one. Okay, so what are we doing? Um, I was just gonna, we bought four of everything, or a little bit more for some of them, so I was just gonna divvy them up into the boxes they're supposed to go in. Okay. And then what happens after that? Then we're gonna put all four boxes back in this box, and ship it back to Bright Hope, and they're gonna put it in a big container, and ship it overseas. I like the visual effects. The big container? Right. Now